and um, the culture for um, for pets is really different depending on where you're from. So it should be an interesting class because we have a really um, diverse class today. <laughs> So I'm going to share my screen. You guys can see the lesson plan here. Oh, and we had Alberto also join us. Hi, Alberto. Hi, hi everybody. Hi. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm okay. And Alberto, remind me, where are you from? I Italy. Remember, okay, I remember your face, but I couldn't uh, remember. I just had one lesson with you. That's why maybe you don't remember me. Yeah, no, I remember your face though. You look familiar. Okay, <laughs> I am the lo the only one with with the camera on. That's why. <laughs> yeah, probably everyone just uses their picture usually. Yeah. All right, so it's, um, so yeah, today we're going to be um talking a little bit about pets, and um, we're going to do a little introduction. Um, so everyone can share maybe an experience um that they've had personally with um having a pet in the house or um, maybe a cat or a dog when they were growing up if you don't have a pet now. Uh, so let's ask Jorgen first. Jorgen, um, what's your favorite pet that you've ever had? Well, I think I must say that it was a dog. I had a dog when I was, uh, I think, seven years of age or eight years of age. Mm -hmm. It was a Cocker Spaniel. It was a puppy. Oh. It was uh, quite tiny and uh, we called it Spot because it was like a, well, it was like, uh, had an uneven color, uh, what do you call it? it mm -hmm. Spotted? Yeah, it was spotted. So my parents said it was love at first sight when we drove home with it and I had it in my, in my, in my lap and uh, it was quite uh, peaceful and, but later we found out that it had a, a defect on the, the one eye, it was blind on the one eye. Aww. And occasionally it would run into a corner and uh, give a uh, give a peep or a little scream, and then would, it would run again. Aww. But by the time my mother uh, found that it was uh, too bad for it, so she uh, took it to the vet, and uh, he had it put to sleep. Oh no! <laughs> so, <laughs> That's that so was, sad. Uh, well, well, yes. I don't think I cried. I can't remember that I cried. It was just suddenly not there anymore. But we had other dogs. We had a sh uh, Schaefer. What do you call it? German Shepherd. Oh, yeah, German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the shock was not so substantial for me uh, after all. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, um, that's kind of a sad story. But thank you for sharing your experience. Cocker Spaniels are really cute. Yeah, they are. They're very cute puppies. <laughs> Okay, let's ask Omar next. Omar, um, can you tell us about uh, your favorite pet that you've had? Uh, my, uh, my favorite pet is uh, it's cat. I like to touch it. Uh, but I, I don't have uh, any animal because, uh, because of in my country it's not good to, to have any uh, animal. But I like cat. It's so oh. cute. Yeah, they are really cute. Um, but it's not really customary in in Saudi Arabia to have dogs yes, or yes. cats. Some people have, but uh, in my village, actually, in my village, it's not good. Okay, they don't like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's interesting. It's it's um like every country and every culture is different, so it's cool to hear about it. And it's nice that you like cats. It's cool. Maybe in the future you can get yes. one. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for sharing your experience too, Omar. Very cool. Thanks. And let's ask Wasu next. Wasu, what's your favorite pet that you've had? Yes. Um. I I ever ever pet the little chick. Oh, yeah. a chick? Like a baby chicken? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But uh, <laughs> but it's it's really really bad memory for me because uh, it's it was killed by the cat of uh, my neighbor. Oh, okay. That's sad. 
Oh, and, and you can say, I'll write it here in the chat box, um, to say that the cat belonged to your neighbor. You could say, my neighbor's cat. So when you add that apostrophe S, that shows that the cat belonged to your neighbor. Yeah, so you could say, my chick was killed by my neighbor's cat, which is really sad. <laughs> well, Okay, well, thanks for um, for relating your, your story for us, too. <laughs> um, I saw that we had Tan Kong join us again. Hi, Tan. I know you said that you didn't have a microphone in the last class, so Tan, if you would like to participate in the chat box, you can feel free to, um, to write answers to any of the questions there in the chat box. Okay, um, so let's ask Paul next. Paul, can you tell us about your favorite pet that you've had? <laughs> All right. So the funny thing is that I've never had a pet in my life, and uh, I think I wasn't interested in them so much. And um, another thing that my mother was like against having any pets, but um, um, <laughs> you can put in the chat the Tamagotchi. <laughs> Uh, which I had when I was uh, really young. But what was it? Okay, um, probably you remember the Tamagotchi things, which was oh, like a, a little yeah. electronic game with a, like um, the the pet in it was like a game, like, <laughs> like an electronic pet. <laughs> yeah, like a little robot pet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I remember playing with that and having fun. Um, at the time, it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, lo a long time ago. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you still, mm -hmm. you, you don't like pets? Like, still? Um, I suppose I'm too lazy to take care of, of them. Okay. <laughs> and that's the main reason I don't have them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do require a lot of time and energy, it's true. Yeah, and patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and patience. <laughs> That's true. Okay, well, that's um, that's like a funny answer to Paul. Thanks for sharing it with us. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so I, I wanted to, to like uh, have fun a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's ask Saiban next. Saiban, what's uh, your favorite pet that you've had, or what kind of animals do you like? Okay, uh, actually, I don't. Uh, I never have had a um, pet in my life. Um, because I don't like the pet, uh, so, but uh, I like to just, uh, if I see the, the animal, anim I mean, the, the pet that belong to other people, I like to pet them, I mean, just uh, to show my, I mean, uh, my, my interest in, my interest to this animal, but uh, I never have had the I never had um, the animal or, or pet in my life. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I used to have a uh, back in the United States. I used to have a um, neighbor. Uh, she had uh, um, she she had uh, a dog, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this dog was very annoying. Just barking, and they they used to. I mean, I really don't like uh, to lick. I mean, how, I don't know how to say yeah, it. Yeah, lick. Lick. Yeah. Picture the dog is licking the little girl. Oh, it's yeah. it's really ack. It's really gross. Awful. You could say yeah. it's really gross. <laughs> yeah, it's really gross. I I don't really don't like a dog or any animal to lick me. <laughs> uh, I really I told her that please keep your dog or your pet away from me because um, <laughs> I really have uh, allergic uh, yeah so uh, as I told you yeah okay so you don't think that you'll be getting any pets in the future maybe cat I like cat oh, it's okay. more clean I like a uh, clean very clean uh, uh, animal and uh, I, I think it, it's my opinion uh, it's up to the the owner but I think uh, cat it's more clean than dogs so I, I really prefer um, cat teacher mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I agree I think cats are a little bit cleaner but yes. some dogs are very clean too it, it kind of depends some yeah, are very dirty yeah, but some yes. are clean you're right 
<laughs> All right. Thanks for sharing your experience too, Saivan. It's interesting to hear your point of view too. And um, the story about your neighbor's dog was funny too. Oh, yes, thanks. <laughs> okay, so let's ask Jose next. Jose, yeah. what's your favorite pet that you've had? Or what kind of animals uh, you like? The best pet that uh, I've had um, is a dog, a, a small dog. When I lived with my parents, uh, they had a small dog. Uh, he. He, I was uh, playing with do, with this dog a lot, a lot, a, long, uh, a, a lot of hours. But after uh, 11 years, he he died. Now uh, I am married and I live in a flat. Uh, uh, I think in, in a flat it's not uh, possible to to have a, a a dog. It's not very very healthy, I think. My, my parents uh, live in a country house. He, they had the, the dog in, in the country house. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier to have um, a dog if you have a house. It like It's yes. kind of hard in the apartments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us, too. Very cool. And Jorgen, I saw he put a link to a picture of of his dog that he has. So it's it's really cute. I opened it in another window. It's really cute. I like the colors he has too. Yes, I think it's from 1972. Wow. <laughs> it's an old one. <laughs> yeah, that's cool that you still have a picture of him. Yeah, very nice. Cool. Okay, and Jose, thank you also for sharing your experience with us too about your okay. your small dog that you you played with, and he lived a long time, eleven years. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's ask um, uh, Kalad next. Kalad, uh, yeah. what's what's uh, your favorite pet that you've had? Or I remember that you said that you were a farmer in the other class. Yes. So. Have you had a lot of animals in the past? Yes, uh, we have uh, in my village. It's normal to uh, have a dog there. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you, it is necessary thing that you have in your farmer uh, because it uh, work as a guard uh, who got, who is uh, looking for your cattle, sheep, and your cows. And the other cows that you have, maybe you have chicken, maybe you have uh, rabbits there. Because in the countryside, your work when you work uh, as a farmer, you need such these animals. Uh, therefore, we cannot consider it that uh, as a pet you have and you're looking for and play with the, with them and like these things. No, it is that it in, in my countryside it has a job. Mm -hmm. To guard your family, your family to guard your uh, to guard your uh, farmer, uh, your farm uh, and your uh, animals there. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that is uh, not precious. I I love my dog there. Uh, it is uh, my friend. You can consider it in, in the, my childhood and the. Uh, we can consider him uh, as a one a member. Maybe you are the one of, uh, of what I, of what I, uh, I will say, but is a member of a family, mm -hmm. of my family. I use it to see it every morning to feed it, and when uh, it's bark, I have to go out at night and say, and he is very 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 loyal animal. Uh, the I admi admiring uh, its loyalty. To the family, it's very, very, very good animal that you have. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I like how you used words like loyalty too. Um, that was really nice. Great description of the dog. It, uh, was it like a German Shepherd, or what kind of dog was it? Excuse me. Was it a German Shepherd, or do you know what no, kind? No, no, of dog? not 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 such kind. We don't know what's uh, it's. Uh, Fortunately, no, no, we cannot uh, looking for it, for such these things. Okay. Uh, 
but uh, it uh, in general not uh, the dogs there not, in general not good dogs. To find a good dog is uh, one favorite is thing that uh, favor. Uh, therefore, uh, sometimes uh, at night we saw it in the morning that is injured is engaged in the fighting with the other dogs. Oh. And uh, to protect uh, the farmer, the, the farm, to protect the animals, to protect, protect the rabbits and the cows, it's uh, very good to have uh, a dog. But uh, as uh, my friend said, they are uh, all the time they are dirty, they are not clean. Therefore, <laughs> they're a little dirty, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, okay, well, that's cool. And, and you said that you had like cattle too? Cattle yes. or yes, yes, but not uh, in such these circumstances. You know that uh, there is a war in Syria now. There is uh, the number now is uh, few, not not big like in the past. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but did you have like cows, or what kind of animals did you have when you had a farm? I have also the same. I have a chicken. I have rabbits. I have uh, cows. I have. Uh, Sheeps, but wow. sheep, but uh, not uh, not a huge number, you know. Yeah. Because my mother likes the like them. Therefore, we kept it uh, keep them in my house, because my mother liked them. It it used to look care to look after and to care about these animals. It is uh, what is some something which is a uh, uh, psychological need. For my mother, therefore, I to to make her happy, I keep it at home, keep that such these animals. Okay, very cool. That's really interesting that you had the farm there in Syria, so many years ago. Very cool. Thanks for sharing your experience, Kalan. Thank you, teacher. Okay, I saw we had Sonic join us. Hi, Sonic. Hi, nice to be. Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Nice to see you again. How are you today? Yeah, yeah. today's good. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Thanks for joining us. Okay, let's ask Alberto next. Alberto, what's your favorite pet that you've had? Uh, let's say that I always had pets in my life, mm -hmm. and both uh, cats and dogs. So my favorite one was uh, a dog. When I was a child, I had this little dog. His name was Snoopy, and Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> he used to come to pick me up at school every day. Aww. Yeah, it was really was, was really good, really sweet, little one, but really really sweet. He was just like a mascot of family, you know. It was like a child eventually, and uh, but actually I I have a cat. I like cats as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a Persian one. It's really good, very big. It weighs almost 15 kilos. It's really big. Wow. <laughs> really big. And uh, I say that pets uh, uh, affect my character as well, but make me more uh, relaxed and tolerant as well. <laughs> uh, I like cats because they are really independent. So uh, they don't bother me a lot, even if I like staying with them, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, as long as you give it, it, it food and water, <laughs> done. they don't bother you anymore. Just when I stay laid out on my couch, it comes, it comes always near, near to me and he wants me to, to how can I say, to, uh, yeah. I, uh, some, sometimes he wants me to, to calm him, you know, mm -hmm. because of... Is for. But anyway, I like. I I can say that actually I like more cats than dogs. I don't know why, but that's the way we. I I am now. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cats have really cool personalities sometimes yeah. too. Yeah. They make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> if you have your cat too, because you have your video, you could show the class your cat. If yeah. You, I don't know I if have he's it, there in it, the house. He's close to to me. Wait. Just, okay. Okay. Just you can show us what he looks I like. Can. Okay. <laughs> okay, and while he's looking for the cat, uh, Sonic, you can tell us also about your favorite pet that you've had, too. Oh, wait. Okay, he already found. Whoa, he's huge. 
He's so big. Hello. My Hi. name is Romeo. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, he's famous now. Everyone. He's yeah, famous. Yeah. yeah, he's really big. <laughs> really big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for showing us the cat too. It's You're really welcome. cool. <laughs> okay, so let's ask Sonic next. Sonic, tell us about um, some pets that you've had. Do you have any pets now? My voice is so loud and I don't know how to control my voice. No, it's okay. It's not too loud. So, in my case, uh, I don't have experience uh, feeding some pet, but I, my mom would like to feed some pet. When I was see, um, maybe five years ago, my my mom ha uh, had feed some some pet, which is the dog and cat. Mm -hmm. So just just is 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 my is my memory. Okay, and. Did you have one that was your favorite? I don't. Uh, I don't have a favorite favorite uh, pet. Okay. Okay. Well, that's cool though that you had dogs and cats when you were younger, when you were growing up. That's very nice. And Sonic, I can't remember what country you're from. Can you remind me where you're from? Hey, I'm I'm from South South Korea. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm happy that you're able to join the class. It's nice to see you again, too. Yeah, I'd like to see you again. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, everyone did really well um, talking about their favorite pets from the past and cool animals that they've had or, in Paul's case, cool robots that they've had. <laughs> so thank you guys for sharing your experiences, too. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, vocabulary that's related to pets, especially in the United States. Um, so we can talk about some of these words here, and um, maybe we can ask Jorgen to read uh, the first two words for us. Uh, yes, terrarium, uh, aquarium. Okay, and Jorgen, could you explain what's the difference between a terrarium and an aquarium? I believe a terrarium is, uh, is a place where you keep uh, lizards and uh, uh, like lizards and aquarium is a place where you keep fish. Okay, yeah, exactly. So we can see here in the picture on the left, this is a picture of a terrarium. You can see that it, it has um, earth here in the bottom and um, or like sand, um, soil here in the bottom and then um, there are plants on the, on the inside. It's dry inside. And so this is a terrarium but then here we can see like a normal aquarium that's full of water with fish. Yes. I, be, I aquarium. believe it's called a terrarium because terra has to do with earth. Yeah, and, exactly. And aquarium and aqua has to do with water. Mm -hmm. So it's like an enclosure where, where there's uh, uh, earth or earth. earth. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah, so those words, um, I think they come from Latin because um, they're still the same words in in Italian as Alberto can probably tell us, <laughs> uh, terra and aqua. Um, so so we can tell by those prefixes what the what they're trying to. It's, do. it's land animals in the terrarium and, and sea animals in the aquarium. Yeah, yeah, and actually, um, land animals are called terrestrial animals. And then um, sea animals are called aquatic. And so they have those same prefixes. So, yes. yeah, that can help um, people that are just learning English. If they see these prefixes, they know it has to do with land or with water. So, yeah, that was a nice point, Jorgen. Thanks for pointing that out. It's good for the other students, too. Awesome. Um, okay, let's ask Omar. Omar, have you heard of the next word? Can you read this one for us? Heat lamp. Yeah, have you heard of this before? A heat lamp. I think it's a uh, electric heat heater. I think uh, uh, create uh, create the uh, the light. I think that. Mhm. Mm 
Yeah, very good. And and usually a lamp is for light. You're right. Um, yes. But some some of these lamps they're made especially for for this. For um, like you can see maybe a picture here of the heat lamp. And can you see what the iguana is doing? This is like a lizard. Yes. I don't know what's the benefit of it. Yeah, I think he's just trying to to warm up, like to warm himself. Yeah. Uh, yes. um, so so some reptiles they need to have a certain temperature, um, to to be healthy and stay alive. And so if you have snakes or lizards, other kinds of reptiles, many of them need a heat lamp, or even. Um, I remember Wasu was saying that he had a chick, he had a baby chicken. And so I think a lot of times when you have baby birds or baby animals, they also need to have like extra heat. So people use a, a lamp like this. It's called the heat lamp. Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you for your help too, Omar. Okay, let's ask Wasu. Wasu, do you know this, this next word? Have you heard of this word before? Sure, habitat. And what is a uh, habitat? It means, uh, it means where to live. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Like a sh shelter, something like that. Uh huh. Yeah, so an animal's yeah. natural habitat is where it would live normally in the wild. Yeah, very good. Awesome. And um, Paul, maybe you can tell us what a veterinarian does. All right. So, uh, veterinarian is simply an um, animal doctor, and uh, I think the short version of that word is a vet. Mm -hmm. So, so the doctor which heals animals. Okay. Excellent. Great job. We can see kind yeah. of a picture here of a veterinarian with a little puppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I job. suppose some of them specialize on like healing like cattle and more like um, far, far, like animals which we can find in the farm rather than at home, but all those kinds exist, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They have different kinds of veterinarians that have different spe um, specialities. Yeah, great job. Very nice. And uh, let's ask Saiban. Saiban, have you heard of a groomer before? No, teacher, I haven't heard this uh, uh, vocabulary. Yeah, this yeah, I know. That this is, I think, a thing that they would have more, maybe something that's more popular in the United States or maybe in Europe. Um, maybe we uh. could ask Alberto lives in Italy. So, Alberto, do you know what a groomer is? Maybe a dog groomer. Um, it's, the word is not similar to uh, Italian one, but groomer I think should be someone who clean and brush uh, animals. Yeah, exactly, perfect. And some some types of um, dogs and cats they they need to have their hair cut. Um, so you usually take them to the groomer, and the groomer will cut their hair. It's kind of like a barber for animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they also they give them baths, like you said, and they can comb them. Yeah. So yeah, very nice. Good job, Alberto. And um, Jose, have you heard of a dog park before? Yes, it's a place where the dogs um, uh, the the dogs uh, can walk around the place or make uh, their necessities. Okay, cool. So it's like a huge park, and the dogs yes. can run free everywhere, just inside that park. Very nice. Um, so do they have dog parks in Spain? Uh, no, in Spain it's not very common uh, to see dog parks. Okay, okay. Um, well, they're becoming more popular um, in the United States. We saw several dog parks while we were in New York City. And um, also in Florida, they have a lot of dog parks there. So maybe they'll, they'll become more popular soon in Spain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, and then the last one is a cat tree. And I'm not sure if anyone has heard of this before. Does anyone know what a cat tree is? 
I can just like. Yes, I know. Okay, okay, maybe you can tell me what is a cat tree. Uh, it is a decorated tree that uh, cats play with or jump in or play with and climb like this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna um, make this picture a little bit bigger so we can see. I tried to um, find a picture here of a cat tree because I know it's not very common in most countries. Okay, so so this is for what do the cats here? What do they do here on the tree? They are playing. Yeah, yeah, very good. So it's a way for them to get some exercise and to climb, um, because in in the wild, cats are usually up in the trees. Very cool. Okay, so these are some vocabulary words that we can try to remember um, that are related to pets um, that are really, really common in the United States. And here we can see some of the animals that are the most common um, to have as domestic pets in the United States. And I'm going to ask you guys to try to match up the name of the animal, of the popular animal, with the picture here. So uh, let's ask Sonic to try first. Sonic, maybe you could tell us which picture matches number one. Um, like para para. I I don't. I don't oh, know sorry. Here number I'm... here number one, German. Mm -hmm. Germans. Shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, German Shepherd. Have you heard of this before? No, I don't have. I have oh, okay. Have this word. Okay, it's it's a kind of dog in um that it's 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 pretty popular in the United States. A German Shepherd, and sometimes the police use this kind yes, of dog. Police use them. Yeah. So maybe you could tell me which picture looks like a dog that the police would use. What do you think, Sonic? The answer is E. Yeah, perfect. Great job. That's right. All right. So um, let's ask um, Khaled. Khaled, could you tell us which one might match number two? Condor driver. I don't. Uh... Have you heard of it before? No. Okay. A golden retriever is also a kind of dog. Uh, it's M. Um, it must be M. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so these are different breeds of dogs that are very popular to have as pets in the United States. A German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever. And you can see he has a golden color, so that's why he's called a Golden Retriever. Yeah, nice job, Khalad. Okay, Alberto, maybe you can tell us which one matches number three. <laughs> Number three Persian cat uh, is uh, letter B. Yeah, so this is a little baby one. Yeah. So maybe this is what your cat looked like when he was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with blue blue eyes. Ah, oh, with eyes. blue eyes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this is a Persian cat. So you can see they have really long fur. Yeah. yeah nice job. Okay, Jose, which one matches number four? Number four. Siamese cat uh, is... Uh, Siamese cat uh, letter D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. And um, the name of this one, it's pronounced like Siamese. Siamese. Siamese, Siamese cat. Yeah, perfect. Great job. Okay, and Saiban, maybe you can tell us which one would match number five. Okay. Mm. Sing I dog. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, maybe a C, letter C. Yeah. So what does it look like the dog is doing here? Uh, maybe uh, looking for s or I think uh, somebody is blind, so yeah. he's helping his owner to guide him. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So that's what this means, a seeing eye dog. They're, they're specially trained to act as the eyes for a blind person. So they can guide them to where they should go. Very good. Great work. That was kind of a hard one, but you did a really nice job. And Paul, maybe you can tell us which one matches number six. All right. Tortoise. And uh, this is letter A. 
Okay, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and would you have a tortoise as a pet, do you think, Paul? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Probably it's uh, the, the slow, like, uh, it's <laughs> very slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but maybe it's, uh, it's a fun activity to, like, to observe that the tortoise, like, walking around a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I know, like, you're not really used to having a lot of pets, but maybe a tortoise would be an interesting one for you. <laughs> maybe. At some point in my life, I'll consider that, yeah. Yeah, maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, nice job. Very good. And Wasu, maybe you can tell us which one would match number seven. Okay, number seven, African Grey Harlot, mm -hmm. uh, letter F. Excellent job, very good. And has anyone seen these kinds of parrots before? The African Grey Parrot? They're kind of famous. Um, I'm not sure, if, Jorgen, have you seen these before? African Grey Parrots? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, well, they're really, um, really well known in the United States because they're very, very, very intelligent, <laughs> um, and they can make like hundreds of different sounds, and um, they can imitate people talking. It's really interesting, and they live for about seventy or eighty years. These parrots. So they're really interesting. It's a, it's a cool pet if you have a lot of time to invest. <laughs> Um, okay, let's ask Omar. Can you try number eight for us? Laguna. Uh huh. Iguana. Laguana. Okay, an iguana is a kind of. Oh, sorry. Yes, it is. I think it's uh, maybe I, maybe L. Oh, I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't see, I don't see uh, the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is an iguana. It's a kind of lizard that lives normally in tropical areas. Um, but they're they really cool pets. We used to have an iguana, and they grow to really large sizes, um, to about one meter, I think, in length. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the metric system, but like about three feet. So I think it's about a meter. Um, but yeah, they're really cool pets, too. OK, um, Jorgen, tell us which one might match number nine. Uh, I think it's uh, picture, num uh, picture G, the, the spider, the large spider. Yeah, <laughs> the tarantula. And Jorgen, would you ever consider having a tarantula for a pet? No, because I've been afraid of spiders since I was a child. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it's called, what is it called, uh, Michel? There's arachnophobia. A arachnophobia. Yeah, there's a movie called arachnophobia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the fear of spiders. Arachnophobia. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, maybe a different pet might be better for you then. <laughs> okay, well, Sonic, I think it's your turn again. Maybe you can tell us which one matches number 10. I think the answer is. Uh, uh, age. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is a hamster. Yeah. <laughs> and so hamsters, he looks big in the picture, but hamsters are actually very small. They can fit inside of your hands. They're um, like the size of a small mouse, kind of hamster. OK, and um, Khalad, maybe you can tell us which one matches number 11. This one might not, it might be a little bit hard, number 11. Yes, it's very hard, not a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ferret. A uh, ferret. Uh, I think it will be fish K. Okay, that's really close. Uh, try one more time. It's not a fish, but it eats cat food. It eats <laughs> cat food? Yes, it's yeah. I. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So this is a ferret. This one here. Very good. And um, maybe Alberto could tell us which one matches number 12. Um, Kai is a fish, letter K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are um, Japanese, I think. Japanese fish, koi. Yes. Yeah. 
cool. And Jose, maybe you can try 13 for yes. us. Boa constrictor. Uh, Jay, the snake. Okay, yeah, that's right. A boa constrictor. Perfect. Great job, guys. So you can tell um, these are um, some of the most popular pets in the United States. So now you know the names of a lot of different animals you didn't know before. And I'd like to also share with you um, an idiom that's related to um, pets and animals. And maybe we can ask Saiban to read this for us, um, the idiom and the definition. And maybe Paul could read the example for us. So idiot, um, um, Saiban, could you read the idiom here? I'm sorry, teacher. Uh, could you please just uh, uh, repeat what did you say? I'm just sure. I didn't pay attention. <laughs> I I'm want sorry. To talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Could you um, could you read this idiom, this phrase, oh, okay. and the oh. definition? Okay. Uh, to work like a dog. To work every uh, to work very hard. Example: The boy worked like a dog on his school project. On his high school project. Okay, oh, thank oh, you. Okay, on his high school project. Sorry. Okay, thank you for your reading. Okay, so Paul, maybe you could give us an example. How would you use this expression to work like a dog in a sentence? All right. So, um, yeah, let me think. It was a really hard day. I got a lot of things done because I've been working like a dog, but now I'm satisfied and ready to rest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent. Great example. Very good. I've been yeah. working like a dog. <laughs> yeah, this is a great idiom because I can remember that the Beatles in one of the songs called The Hard Day's Night used th that idiom. Yeah, okay. so if you're interested, you can check this out. Yeah, I've heard that song before. It says, it's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so that's good. That will help you to remember that um, that idiom, and you can use it in your conversations, too. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Paul. And maybe we could ask, um, Jorgen, would you like to also try to give us an example? How would you like to use that in a sentence? To work like a dog. Like a dog? Hmm. I've been working like a dog, uh, cleaning up in my kitchen. Yeah, excellent. Awesome example. Very good. And um, maybe we could ask um, Alberto, would you like to try to use this also in a sentence? Uh, I work like a dog from Monday to Friday, but then at the weekend I rest all day long. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it looks like you guys have a really good understanding of um, how to use that idiom in your conversation. So try to make it your goal to um, to really use it so that you can um, remember and you'll you'll have that in your vocabulary for the future. And so now I'd like to hear everyone's opinions Excuse on. Me, teacher. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I, actually, uh, actually, teacher, uh, I just want a uh, comment. I have just uh, a really small comment I don't want to waste the time no, just I, I think this idiom it is in in my in our culture in my culture uh, uh, in Kurdish culture north part of Iraq we don't use a dog we use uh, a donkey <laughs> instead like of a donkey. Dog. <laughs> yeah so I mean we say oh you're working like a donkey because in here in our culture the donkey working very hard and he is the the symbol of the hard worker, so wow. uh, just uh, just I mean, uh, like uh, information. I mean, just uh, like information to, to to know that we use the same idiom in our culture, but instead of dog, we use a donkey. <laughs> in Italy too, we use donkey. In Spain, it's the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, wow. uh, but in our culture, it's uh, the donkey is. Uh, Symbol of uh, stupidity. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like to work to work hard like a donkey is much more common than to work hard like a dog. <laughs> oh yes. But um, but yeah. So just try to remember though, uh, if you're if you're having a conversation in English instead of in in Kurdish or in Spanish, remember to. Um, to say that you're working hard like a dog, because if you say you're working hard like 
a horse or like a donkey, maybe they won't they won't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But great job. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. It's very interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, I'd really like to hear everyone's opinions on this controversial subject. Um, a lot of people have wild animals as pets, and they think that it's um, it's kind of fun and exciting, but other people say it's really dangerous. Um, so, Sonic, maybe you could read um, this little paragraph for us, and I'd like to hear everyone's opinions, if we can. I mean, the, this article and... I, I need to think about this uh, this uh, discussion, so uh, I need to have a time to think okay. about it. Okay. Yeah, no problem, no problem. It's okay. Um, Khalad, would you like to read it for us? Yes. Okay. In my countries, in many countries, it has uh, become a fad a fad to have a wild animals as a pet. For example, some people pre pet wolves. With a dog, with dogs, and sell them as exhaustic pets. Uh, other attempts to tame uh, animals such as foxes, monkeys, or even wall wallabies. Wallabies. Uh, what are your thoughts on this project? On, your, uh, on this practice, uh, is it good idea for the owners? Would the animals be happy? Have you had wild animals as a beautiful before? Okay, so very nice reading, Kala. Thank you. And Alberto, maybe we can ask you your opinion first. Do you think it's a good idea to have a wild animal as a pet, like a tiger or a monkey? I don't think it's a good idea because, uh, I mean, I saw a lot of documentary where people were breeding... Um, uh, pets and wild animals together, but then eventually, sometimes, always something bad happens. So when they are when they are little one, when they are a pet, no, 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 no pet. Wild animal when are little, how could I, how could I call them? Um, when they're babies. Maybe? Yeah, when they're babies. Yeah, they seem they seem to be uh, very good. They seem to be like a pet. And then when they when they uh, grown up, then it could be different because their nature always is, uh, is hidden. So you must be careful because sometimes they react in a way that you maybe don't expect. So never trust a, a wild animal, especially if you live in a house with with children or or people. You know that never know how to react then. Yeah, it can be dangerous, especially if there are children. A lot of really yeah. dangerous. Uh, let's think, ask. Uh, teacher, I think uh, rich people only who has such these pets, as uh, to show people, other people, that uh, we are rich, we are have uh, uh, this kind of uh, luxurious uh, features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe they try to use it as like a status symbol to show that they... Yeah that they are very rich. That's true. Maybe they have that motive. Let's ask Jose too. Jose, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea to have a No, I, I think uh, it is not a good idea because this kind of uh, animal they used to live in, in the in the wild and when you you have you have um, this this kind of animal in a flat uh, it is not uh, the uh, his uh, he it, it is not its habitat. It's it's strange for 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 the animal. I think that the animal can uh, do exercise, can can uh, can uh, run. Uh, it's very strange. The animal um, could. Uh, Put it on on wake is not uh, healthy for for the for the animal. Yeah, it's a little bit sad for them too. They don't yeah. get the exercise they need. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's ask Saiban. Saiban, what do you think? Should you have a wild animal as a pet? Uh, of course, uh, I I agree with other classmates. Wild animal should live in the wild in the forest. I mean, it's very dangerous to have them. Uh, among your uh, family, 
or uh, among I mean in in your house uh, I think uh, it's it's very very dangerous uh, because uh, as other classmate uh, mentioned that they might uh, they might um, attack in any moment they they have I mean if they have if they are angry or if they are if they are I mean hungry they if you don't feed them uh, properly they will I mean uh, if they have any chance they will attack you and their attack it's very fatal uh, sometime they even uh, kill their owner so of course I I don't recommend it any I mean any person or any anyone to have a wild animal in the house. Yeah, it could be dangerous, you're right. Yes. Maybe we could ask Jorgen next to you, what do you think? Should you have an, a wild animal as a pet? Well, I don't think it's a bad idea. Because as the other students say, they are living, the, they are belong in the wild. That's why they are called wild animals and um, they cannot be habituated to, to uh, domestic life. Yeah. And it's it's against their nature. Their nature is to be to be wild. And also, I think it's uh, it doesn't look right to see a a tiger and on a leech. Uh, I think it's disrespectful for the animal. Uh, or, or see a bird in a in a small cage. I think it's uh, it doesn't look right. It, it's it, uh, you have to you have to uh, to honor the animals uh, if I can use that word also because mm -hmm. show them respect. As the as the as the creatures they are, uh, it's it's much nicer to see a tiger in the wild running than see a tiger in, in a domestic house with a with a leech gun or something. I think it's well, it it looks sick in some way. It doesn't look. Uh, I I wouldn't like to to visit visit someone who had such a pet because I would I would keep on saying you you have to uh, let it go because uh, it's not right, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it is a little bit sad um, because they they have um, I think a more fulfilling life when they live in the wild. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, and we still haven't heard from Omar, Wasu, Paul, and Sonic, um, but I we ran out of time already for the class, so maybe I could ask you guys to write your answers in the chat box in the Burbling chat. And um, and then I can read the answers after after the class, but um, but yeah, since we ran out of time, I have to go already. Um, but you guys all did really really well um, using um, your new vocabulary and also expressing your opinions about um, the animals that you like that you've had in the past and about um, other people having wild animals as pets. So excellent job, everyone, and I hope I get to see you guys soon in another class. And um, all the people that didn't get to answer okay, the last question, put the answer there in the chat box. Okay. So I'll see you guys okay. again soon. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.